be covering the POS with you. I'm going to break this video up into two main sections here. One's going to be the POS front end, and the other's going to be the POS back end. So the first question here is probably going to be, what is a POS? And a POS is going to be a point of sale, or basically just a cash register or till interface for you to make sales from. Um, this is Deer's specific POS, so it's going to work really nicely with Deer, and the integration is very clean and seamless. However, due to it being uh, a bolt-on, it may not be the best in terms of functionality out there. So you may want to shop around to see if any have a bit more functionality to offer. But uh, if you're looking for one that works well with Deer, this is probably going to be a top of the range one since it was made for that purpose. So um, the first thing you're going to do when you load up the POS is you're going to want to sign in. You then get the option to open up a new register. So for this, you want to set the amount of money within the register in cash. So we have a hundred pound cash. And then you can add any notes to say why the register is opened or any other additional information. So I'm just going to put Monday opening here. However, this can be whatever you'd like it to be. You can then open up that register and doing so is going to give you a little document like so, which you can then use for accountability at a later date. So you can see that a hundred pound cash was in the till and then you can want, uh, compare that to when it's closed. Uh, and then you always have the username who's opened it here, so you can refer back to them. Once that uh, register has been opened, you'll get the sales screen pop up like so. And this is going to allow you to add items to a sale and then uh, make that sales order. So if I just click into printers, for example, I can add a couple of items to printers that would be in our store. And I then have them listed here like so. Within here, we have our subtotal. We can add a discount in if we'd like. Um, you will need certain permission levels for that and a couple of other things within the POS. So uh, you do get separate permission levels within the POS as well. So you can set those up to your liking. We can then discard the sale to get rid of it or park the sale if the customer is gone and they're gonna come back and purchase these items at a later date. Uh, if we're not doing either of these, we then click this plus button here where we can add a customer so this is going to be a customer who exists within the main, your main Deer account. Um, if we don't provide a customer here, or add a new customer here, it's just going to use a generic Shopify customer that we set up on the back end. But we can use one from Deer here if we do know them. Then we can add a sales rep, so I'm going to use myself. That's a required field, so you will always have to add a sales rep. However, you have a couple of options for how you'd like to configure sales reps on the POS. We then have a quick sale, so if you want to sell one specific item for cash with no other information, you can do so here. And notes if you want to add any. Now that we're done with this, we can click pay. It's going to warn us that we have insufficient stock because I don't have these items in stock. And that's because it does link nicely with Deer and can read the stock levels from there. So at this point, you could cancel the sale or we could put these items into back order. I'm going to put them into back order. Um, and then we can pick whether we want to pay in cash or credit. Uh, credit card. I'm going to use cash. We can enter the amount of cash that was given to us, so I'm going to have to do 483.69, like so. And then we can actually receive that cash in here and specify any change that was given back below. So I'm just going to receive that in, so that's going to complete that sale. And then I'm able to print and or email my receipt, so if we get the customer to give us an email address, we can email their receipt to them virtually, or we can print that up and hand it to them if we integrate a printer. Um, so when that sale is complete, what it's going to do is it's going to push a normal sales order into Deer, uh, as you would with most. And in this case, the payment's going to be received, um, the stock's going to be adjusted out, and the customer will be set to that other customer. So other than that, it's going to look like a normal sales uh, order. It's just going to be uh, all pre-filled out for you, and the sales rep and things are going to be slightly different. Once we're happy with that, um, we can move on and look at some of the other features. So the first thing I'll show you here is the setup. And within here, you're able to set up a scanner, a printer, and payment. So within here, you can set up a couple of different methods of payment. You can attach a printer to your device. So if you're using a tablet or a computer, you can plug in a printer via USB or USB-C and set that up and a scanner. We at Bluehub aren't hardware specialists and we don't have our own POS, so we don't actually know the specifics for how this works. However, through you working with our clients, we do have a few recommendations that we do know work. 
Um, but we wouldn't be able to go into too much depth on any recommendations with these items. If we had our items set up there, we have a couple of other options. We have our dashboard, which is just going to be overall reports based on this outlet. So it's going to tell us all of our details, uh, like our cost of goods, our profit, and things like that for this outlet specifically. We have our sales screen, which is what we was just using. Um, so he's on our register, but we can view our parked sales, any offline sales, um, just as an FYI. You can create offline sales using the POS app. Um, so what I'll do is you will be able to take the sales even if you're not connected to the internet. Then once you do connect to the internet again, they'll be pushed uh, and then uploaded at that later date. This could be really useful if you're a traveler and you're making sales on the go. You can do so and then the sales will be pushed back uh, online the moment you get connection again. We here, here we have the option to open and close our till. So we'd open it at the start of the day, close it at the end. You can do this as frequently or infrequently as you like. So you can do it monthly, bi-monthly, yearly if you'd even like. Um, what the difference is that's going to make is just going to change your reports. So your reports are going to often be since the register is opened. So uh, if you are opening it regularly, you'll be able to report on a day-to-day -day basis. But if you're doing it uh, on a monthly basis, your report is going to be for that month. We then have cash management to manage our uh, actual tender. Sales history, so we can view all of the sales we've made at this uh, outlet since it's been opened. Um, you won't be able to see any before that point. Click and collect. So with this, we can create click and collect sales where customers can come in and collect their items. This is going to populate as a sales order on deer, but be specified as click and collect. So you know that that customer has to come in and collect that even within deer. Um, we then have our inventory menu where we can do stock takes for the store through the uh, POS. It doesn't have to be done through the POS. You can use the regular deer app if you'd like. However, it does give you that functionality here if you don't have a computer in the store. We also have products. Um, so we can view our products that are listed within this store at this page here. We can transfer goods from here to somewhere else or from somewhere else to here using this menu. Um, and then we can order more products or see any products that have been ordered through the ordering tab. We can see all of our different customers from the customer screen here and how much they've actually spent or how much they have due. Um, we can see our users on the next tab. So this is going to be any users you have who actually have access to this POS system. You can add more in or take more out and specify the outlet they have access to here. Um, and then finally, we have some basic reports we can use for this register. So we can see all of our inventory, sales, summary, and things like that for this uh, specific store. That's going to be everything in terms of uh, your extra functionality there. So I'll show you quickly. We can then close our uh, register. And it's going to show us how much money we've actually made. We can count our cash and apply how much you've actually counted here. So I've counted, let's just say I've counted uh, 580 of it. You'll see that we have that discrepancy of £3.69. And that's going to go against your petty cash account or your cash indifference account, I believe. And then it will just show you that that money has not been accounted for. Once we're happy with that, we can then close the register. And there we go, the register is closed. We can then log out if we'd like. Uh, and we can also set a PIN code so you have to use a PIN to get access to the register. Now that we've kind of covered the actual app itself and what that looks like, um, once again it can be used on a PC, tablet or mobile device. I'll get into the actual settings of this and what you can modify on the back end. Now that we're on our general settings here, we can look through some of the more important ones. Um, so we have our setup, which is going to be our main settings, uh, and I'll get to the others afterwards. I'm just going to skim through these since uh, not all of them are going to be that important. Firstly, we have con uh, consolidation of sales. So we can either have daily consolidation or no consolidation, depending on whether you want to see individual sales coming through on the POS or you want to see all of your sales coming through as POS sales in one uh, actual sales transaction. Here we can specify the default customer. It's actually going to be a mandatory field to specify the default customer. So if a customer isn't applied on the sale, this customer will be used. So we recommend for this you set up a POS customer as standard. So you can then select that POS customer and you'll see that all of their sales coming through. Here we can specify default tax for uh, sales on the POS, default uh, price tier for the POS. All of this can be overrode on the actual sale itself, but it's basically just going to be your customer details there. Here we have up from the check availability on checkout. 
and that's going to refer to when it told me I was out of stock before that's going to be that feature there so if you don't want it to do that and you always want sales just going to back order regardless you can turn that off however we would probably recommend you turn it on just so you have that knowledge of that being on back order um, you can do auto assemblies within here so you can have auto assemblies uh, for the order quantity or you can generate all of your uh, auto assemblies at once for your minimum quantity to produce we have our account settings so we can select different accounts for the sales that come from the POS so we can do things like our rounding rules our cash in and out um, our petty cash etc we can also pick here what we want our invoices to come through as so we can have them come through as unauthorized or drafts that we have to approve those we can then also select our sales rep here so that's what I was saying before when you could pick between your sales reps you can either have that as up here as the outlet name the cashier name or a custom name that you get to pick, which is the menu I went into before. Um, you have some security settings for when you're inviting more users there. We have some POS integrations here, so there are just a couple of different things you can integrate with. We're using Payment Sense right now. I know Stripe is also an option, so it isn't just limited to these, um, but these ones are available natively, it seems. We can then go down and we can change our UI, so we can change our catalog size and things like that. So just to make it look a little bit nicer or more appealing and or more useful for you. Um, we can select our template for the closing register here. So if you wanted to update and change our receipts and or our template uh, or closure thing, we can do that here. We can do uh, delivery scheduling if we'd like to turn that on and manage that. And then finally, we can link our different payment methods to different uh, accounts. All of ours are linked to one account because this is an example uh, POS but you'd obviously link these to all of your different accounts within your accounting software. Moving on, we have what we call quick keys, and that's gonna be um, your different catalogs within uh, your POS. So as you can see here, we have a quick key of stools, and within there, we can specify what products we want in there. So we're using the tag stools, but you can also use things like categories um, or specific products, I believe. I'm not 100% on that, it does not look to be the case, but you can basically list products into these categories based on different fields here. As you can see, we have a few of these set up, and I think you can have as many of these set up as you'd like. You can set them up uniquely for each register as well, so these are all ones for register one, however you could do a different quick key for register two if you'd like, so if you had a register in a different department, you could use different uh, quick keys there so they can select different products. If you're using the barcode scanner, none of this will matter too much since you'll just scan the barcode. However, if you are using that touch interface, setting these up nicely can be quite useful. Here we can create and manipulate our outlets. So we have one for main warehouse. We have options in here for default taxes, time zones. Uh, we can select our receipt template. And as you can see here, we have a square integration for our payments. And it's going to use the API key here. Within there, we can also change some further register details. So we can select the register that we've created for the outlet. We can give that register a name. We can change the accounts and we can change uh, a couple more specific details for that. So you get a bit of customization within that there. Here we can manipulate our users who have access. So if I click into me here, um, we can see that I have administrator access, but you can edit user permissions here. So you can make it so certain uh, people can't give discounts or change prices, etc. if you'd like. Next, we have our catalog, and this is going to refer to the items that are actually listed. So our quick keys are going to be the items we have available on our touch screen, but these are going to be the items that are actually available within the store. So if it says not listed here, it won't be available to sell within the store or on the POS, and we'll have to list it to the POS by clicking that like so. We can then go to bulk listing, and this is going to like to add products to the POS by category or tag, etc. So we can use the following options to list in bulk, or we can just list literally all of our items by clicking that, as you can see. We can also unlist items via the same way, or we can unlink them so changes within the POS don't work or don't affect the items that aren't on the POS. Here we can see a list of sales that have come through from the actual POS. So when I say um, Using the POS is just going to create a sales within, uh, sale within Deer. Like all of your other sales, this is what I mean. I'll jump into one of these after I'm done going through the rest of the settings. Um, but for now, uh, that that's all our sales that are coming in, and they're going to come in as generic sales. 
We can export our payments here if we'd like uh, to export them to a uh, R0 or something of that nature. We have a log of everything that's happened here. Um, we have customer credits, surcharges, cash payments, setups, and cash reasons. Um, we can set all of these up. These are just some minor settings that you can go in and manipulate if you like. But let's get into our actual sales. So these ones haven't worked for some reason. And that's because the guest customer wasn't selected because I hadn't got that set up. But if we click into this one where our customer has been used, we can see that this is order 0002. And it's going to have the customer walk-in customer. So that's the customer that was used. Um, if we went into actual deer, we loaded the sale and went into deer, we would then be able to find that sale within deer and we would be able to process that like any other sale. So that's how it's going to work with your actual deer. It's just going to push those sales in and then pull stock from deer. So that should be everything regarding the POS. Uh, I know this has dragged on for a bit, but there was a lot to cover. So if you've got any questions, obviously get in touch with us at Blue Hub. Leave it in the comments. Um, contact us directly. Um, so I hope this video was helpful. And if you was thinking about a sale with the POS, I hope this video helps with that. And I will see you next time. Bye.